I said I would come on and do a little bit of explaining around the use of my fitness pal because I think it's uh, I think it's misused quite a lot and based on questions I've received through my social media channels over the last couple of weeks probably because I've been speaking about how I've been using it myself I think lots of people are using it lots of people are depending on it for for the kind of be-all and end-all they're using it all the time not seeing any results and not seeing any changes and wondering why okay so what I wanted to say to you is this first and foremost uh, my fitness pal is an approximation Okay, so unless you go into a lab, you have your expired carbon dioxide and your inspired oxygen measured, uh, you're not going to have a really, really definitive uh, resting metabolic rate number given to you. Okay, so what I mean by that is um, how many calories you're burning on, a, on a, any given day, on a day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute basis. So basically, what, what my fitness pal is run off is an approximation, it's run off formulae that have been developed over years of research and we're all different so it's one formula for the entire population and there are a number of different formulae and some of them will give you slightly different uh, calculations that might be a hundred calories apart might be 80 calories apart might be 200 calories apart but generally they all come in in that same kind of bracket um, so but while you might be told that you should be on 2,000 calories a day, uh, for one individual it might be 1,990, for another individual it might be 2,020, uh, for somebody else it might be 1,900. So just remember that just because it says so on the app doesn't mean that it's correct. Okay, so I want to run through bit by bit uh, some pointers that I think will be of benefit for you in my fitness pal. The first one is when you're setting up my, my fitness pal, don't set it up for weight loss. Don't set it up for weight gain. Just set it up for maintenance because you have no idea if the maintenance number that my fitness pal has set up for you is actually correct or incorrect. All right, so that's the first thing. And stay at that for about two weeks. All right, to get an idea on your maintenance, are you gaining weight? If you are gaining weight, well, then you can be sure that your weight loss, uh, for, your, for your weight loss approximation, it's just going to be uh, maintenance. Okay, so make sure that your maintenance that my fitness pal has set for you is correct. All right, that's the first thing. Second thing is set up your macronutrients. For optimizing uh, lean muscle mass, uh, you want to have your protein intake definitely at bare minimum, one gram per kilogram of body weight. So if you're weighing 70 kilograms, you want to be taking in 70 grams of protein, ideally more, okay? So if you're doing any bit of walking, movement, exercising, endurance running, training in the gym, lifting four days a week, you have to be taking in much more protein than that. So anywhere between one gram per kilogram of body weight and two grams per kilogram of body weight for the normal average individual who's exercising. Okay, I'm not talking about really highly trained people here. So if, if I have somebody who comes to me and says that they go to the gym two or three times a week and they do a little bit of running, I'm gonna put them on about 1.6 to 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So that equates to, you can go and work out what that is if you want to. Generally, for general population, I say 25% of your overall intake should be protein, okay? 30% fats. And when you go into my fitness pro, uh, when you go into my fitness pal, into goals, you can set all these targets without joining the next level up that you have to pay for or anything, okay? So 25% protein, 30% fat, and then the rest is carbohydrate. If you're very, very sedentary, increase your protein intake and reduce your your carbohydrate intake. Uh, if you have any renal issues or kidney issues or other health issues, speak to your GP before doing this. And you will have different guidelines on your protein intake anyway. So the next thing you want to do is, if you're using any of the suggested food types, use the ones where possible with the blue tick. Those are the ones that have been verified by my fitness pal as being correct. Because I could go into my fitness pal, add a tub of uh, paint and put a, put a calorie content on it and a fat content and a protein content and my fitness pal would take that as gospel and everybody would use it. So remember only the blue ticks are verified food stuffs with the correct macronutrients and the correct calorie content. Okay. The other thing you can do on my fitness pal is you can use the barcode. So if your food has barcode and it's not some innocuous organic uh, deliciousness from down in the depths of West Cork, um, and even some of those are on my fitness pal, uh, you can barcode it, you can scan your barcode and it will give you the correct amounts as well. Okay. So the next thing, now, 
Some people might go wild when I say this and I might have dietitians knocking down my door telling me that I'm going to drive people crazy. But guys, one of the main problems I see is that people don't have a clue how much food they're actually eating. They take a bowl of crunching of cornflakes and they fill it like this over the top. A portion of crunching of cornflakes is 30 grams. That would probably just about fill this little tester of, of paint. Yeah. So it's a really good idea just for a couple of days, maybe two days, measure your food. Know what 40 grams of porridge oats looks like. Get a little tub or a small cup or a little china teacup and use that to measure it. Know what a 100 gram baked potato looks like. Because I've seen people coming out with these masses of, like, kilo of potatoes on their plate or kilo, well, okay, maybe not a kilo, I'm overreacting again. But a pile of potatoes or a pile of chips or a pile of rice or whatever and they're completely incorrect with the amount that they're guesstimating that it is in MyFitnessPal and they're wondering why they're not losing weight or why the MyFitnessPal plan isn't working for them, okay? So it's a really good idea just for two days or do it once. Look at all the foods that you eat regularly and measure them or weigh them just once so you have an idea of what you're looking at. Ah, the next thing is only do that for two days. After two weeks of ensuring that you are actually at maintenance, Knowing you're at maintenance means your weight doesn't change at all. Okay, if your weight doesn't go up and it doesn't come down, you're probably in and around your correct maintenance calories. Okay, and you need about two weeks for this to work. You might be 50 above, you might be 40 below, it doesn't matter. So, once you know you're at maintenance, that's when you can start to mess around with the, with the and change the requirements. It will say if you want to lose weight, if you want to gain weight, etc. Keep that number small, guys. Don't go for something ridiculous like two pounds a week or five pounds a week. If you want to lose two pounds of body fat every week, you have to be in a 1,000 calorie deficit on a daily basis. That is lunch and dinner, okay? And probably a half hour walk, all right? Uh, depending on what you're having for lunch and dinner. That's a huge amount of calories. And if you're eating 2,000 calories a day, that is half your caloric intake. Eating 1,000 calories a day is not okay. All right, now a little red flashing light will come up and tell you, oh, ideally the, the least you should be eating is 1200. 1200 is too little, really, for most people, okay? So my recommendation would be that unless you're exercising very frequently and you're eating really well, it's kind of hard to reduce your intake by 1000 calories. It's really hard, you're gonna be really hungry. Dieting is really, really, really hard. If you're doing it properly, you have brain fog, you feel tired, you're moany and cranky. I've been there for competition. I've done it and it's becking horrible. So keep your deficit as small as possible. Keep it to around 200 calories if you can manage that at all and increase your activity levels, okay? Just like I said in my post the other day, park a little bit further from the supermarket, park a little bit further from the school and walk to the school. Park a bit further from the gym or even better, walk to the gym. Don't be saving yourself for deadlifting. 10 minute walk to the gym isn't gonna kill you. So that's it guys. In a nutshell, set up your My Fitness Pal, make sure you're at maintenance for two weeks. Set up so that your protein is 25%, between 25 and 30%, your fats are at 30% and the balance of your carbohydrates are there as well. It only adds up to 100 guys, you can't get it that wrong. Then you're going to only use verified where possible or scan your food in so that you know you're tracking the correct food. Okay, finally, make sure that you know the amounts you're looking at. Just spend a day even measuring those amounts. You don't have to do it every day of every week and don't get too bogged down in the numbers because it's all a formula. It's not specific to you as an individual, okay? It's gonna get as close as it can to you and what your needs are, but it's not down to you as an individual. If you don't uh, eat 100 grams of protein in a day, you only eat 95, you're not gonna die. Let's all calm down for a moment, okay? If you have 10 or 20 or 100 calories over where you're supposed to in your carbohydrate intake, let's all stop screaming and waving our arms in the air. It's fine. You can make it back tomorrow, do a few extra steps, or just enjoy them and get on with it, okay? So when it comes to wanting to lose weight, slow, steady, small steps at a time, and if in doubt, DM me or send me an email fiona at fionaodonnell.ie and I would be happy to help. 
in the meantime, set up your MyFitnessPal because what gets measured gets managed.